So we are talking about powerful evidence for the existence of God. That is, powerful evidence for the existence of God. And let me say this. There is some form of a moral order that exists outside of culture and outside of independent of human, human beings. There is such a thing as some sort of abstract standard called justice, an absolute right or wrong, and we all sort of recognize that it's true and it exists. Now, your, or, your, your, super, your, your intelligent atheist is already going to start hemming and hawing and debating that. Why? Because it quite clearly, because that in and of itself, very simple sentence, that there is such a thing as absolute right and wrong, standards of morality, and they exist outside of human cultures, and they exist outside of humans, that's quite clearly already pointing to the existence of a God. But we'll get there. We're not there yet. Maybe not the Christian God, okay? But it's pointing to the evidence of the existence of God. But that's not neither here nor there for now. I'll get to that in a minute. Let's just see, let's just see if that's true. Is that true? Your atheist is going to argue, and they have. They have written me arguments about this. Morality is something that is ingrained in you by your culture. It is something you're taught by your parents, and that is how we learn right from wrong. You're taught by your parents and the society around you, and they're agreed upon standards that you learn. Is that true? No, actually it isn't. Now, in some instances, it may appear to be true because for certain things, it is true. But in general, for example, this culture over here says eating shrimp is evil. Okay, this culture over here says shrimp is delicious. That is subjective. That is subjective. This culture over here, and that is something that would be culturally ingrained. So if you grow up in this culture and you're taught that eating shrimp is evil, when you travel to, to this, this island where they eat shrimp all the time, you're going to feel revulsion. Probably ingrained in you from your culture, not necessarily in accordance with any sort of standard of right or wrong. It's, it's just culturally ingrained. But that example is quite obviously subjective. We, we put it into the realm where it is not subjective. We can see that it is objective. It becomes a lot easier to see where it is black and white, right and wrong. Some of the confusion about this is that we don't always have access to this standard. But let's just see if it's really there and if it has anything to do with your culture. Let's take the most obvious example in history of, of an evil culture. That would be Nazi Germany. 1933 to 1945, the Nazis, the Nazis taught you in your culture that Jews were subhuman. They propagandized against them. They tried to train you to hate and persecute Jews, to view them as subhuman, less than. Eventually, they took away all their rights and eventually precipitated a, a genocide against them. Objectively speaking, not subjective, objectively speaking, this was absolutely wrong and absolutely evil. Now, Again, your more intelligent atheist is going to hem and haw. Because if we say that, it question automatically arises of its own accord. According to who? Or according to what standard? Well, according to some, uh, some standard of right and wrong that we all know exists. And if you don't think it exists, look at your own heart and see quite clearly that it's there. Go read a book on Nazi Germany. I recommend Survival in Auschwitz. One of the most powerful books you will read on the subject, personal testimony from an atheist, Italian Jew, who was an atheist, mind you, talking about being in Auschwitz. You will see what was done to him, and you will see for yourself, for the evidence of your own heart. Your own heart will show you quite clearly that what was done to him was evil. It was wrong by an objective standard, not a subjective standard. No, it's not wrong according to culture. Right there we see that. Why? Because according to Nazi culture and Nazi teaching, it was, it was justified within their culture. They justified it. Your culture can violate that standard. It doesn't mean the standard goes away. Indeed, it would be possible for somebody in Nazi Germany, and there are examples of this in history, of a German being raised in Nazi Germany in 1937 who decided based on his evidence of his own heart against his culture. 
culture was trying to train him to perceive Jews as, as bad, rats, evil, less than human. And he could have decided within his own heart that that was not true, based only on the evidence of his own heart. Because there is some standard of right and wrong that is outside of your culture that he had access to, mysteriously. Because it's actually there, quite obviously. Now, if it's according to culture, then the Nazis just had opinions. Over here in this culture, our culture, we think that Jews are human beings and they should be treated like human beings and not persecuted and not killed. That's just our opinion. Over here, you know, you say Jews are human beings. Here we say they're evil and they should be killed. Tomato, tomato. You know, who's to say with all our modern ideas of right and wrong, what is right? And, it's, it's absurd on the face of it. Go look at Nazi Germany. Clearly wrong. Clearly and obviously wrong. Not according to culture. Because if it was order, according to culture, then they're just opinions. And they aren't. Because the Nazis had different opinions. And it's obviously not a, a, a standard according to man. Why is that? Because Nazis are human beings. Last time I looked, Nazis were human beings too. You can Google it. You can Google that. Were the Nazis human beings? You will find out, yes, Nazis were human beings. So it cannot be a man-made man standard. Otherwise, it is subjective. It's debatable. We say that Jews are human beings. Nazis don't. It's up, for, it's up for debate. It isn't. Your evidence of your own heart tells you quite clearly that it's not up for debate. There is some sort of moral standard there. Now, why is the atheist Hamming Hong? Because if that standard exists, and I just showed you that it clearly does, if that standard exists as I said it did, then we only got three possibilities. An atheistic view of the universe. We are alone here. Nobody created us. There is no God. Then there are only three possibilities for that moral standard. You either got to theorize it out of existence, prove that it doesn't exist, turn morality into subjectives, when, when, when we, but when we can clearly see that they aren't when we cut them down to their essence. Yes, some morals are subjective, but in essence, no, they aren't. In essence, no, they aren't. Even when we talk about justice in our own culture, we talk about finding justice. Finding justice in a given situation, not creating justice. Implying quite clearly that there is a standard outside of us to be pursued. That we try to pursue and attain, but it isn't coming from us. Okay, so we still, we're, we're talking with the three options for the atheist. You theorize that, what I just told you, out of existence. You pretend that, re that morality is subjective. Good luck with that. Good luck with that because, it's, because you aren't right. I just showed you that it's objective. There are times where it is subjective, yes, but in its essence, no. It is an objective standard and it stands outside of culture. Number two, man created it. Man created that standard. Absurd. Absurd on the face of it because that standard stands outside of human agency. And we barely recognize it when it appears. We sometimes live in accordance with that standard, we sometimes pursue that standard, but it is possible for men to completely disregard it, and we barely know it. There is no way on earth we could have, we could have and when you're reading the book, no way on earth man could have created it. And you look for yourself, you go read the book on the Holocaust, and you see, the hair on your arm will stand up. You will be morally repulsed by what you read, and you will know for a fact in your heart that such a thing as evil exists. And it is not a man there telling you it. It is your own observation based on evidence of your own heart. I would argue, but this is not for today, that God is clearly available to you in your own heart. Often and always. But that's not for today. Today we're just talking about this standard. It clearly exists, and we only got three possibilities in an atheistic worldview. Remember, the atheistic worldview is defined. We are alone in the universe. Nobody put us here. Nobody created us. Then who, where is the standard come from? How is it there? Three possibilities. You theorize it out of existence. Man created it. Or it spontaneously arose out of nature. Again, absurd. 
How is that absurd? Because it does not exist in nature. Nature is amoral. There is a moral order that's, that runs through the universe, clearly visible, clearly outside of culture, clearly independent of the, of the hearts and mind of men. We have access to it, but we didn't put it there. And it cannot have come from nature. Why? Because it does not exist in nature. Nature is amoral. Go look. Turn on an animal show and look. A lion will overpower a zebra and kill him. <gasps> he killed him. Somebody's got to put that lion on trial for murder. No. Nobody ever does. They get away with it all the time. Why? Because there's no moral transgression taking place. A lion is acting in accordance with his own nature, and that is, that is nature. It is amoral. There is no moral order in nature. The strong overpower the weak, the strong survive. That's nature. That's where a lot of atheistic-leaning philosophers got their juice from. Because they recognized that nature was amoral and then theorized that, that human society must be amoral too. But there is clearly and obviously a moral order running through the universe. We can see it being violated and understand in our own hearts without any other, th any other th evidence but the, but the truth in our own heart that it's, when we read about Nazis, they violated a standard of right and wrong. Violated it trampled on it, desecrated it. The words I use indicate that it is holy. I believe that it is holy. But again, we're not there yet. We're not talking about, I'm not at the point yet where I'm talking about Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, hallelujah, all that type of stuff. We're just talking about morality, if there is an objective standard of morality that quite clearly points as evidence of a creator. Why? Because who wrote that standard? It could not spontaneously have arisen out of nature because it does not exist in nature. It only seems to exist in human society. Who wrote it? Who put it there? A theistic worldview, the, the answer is obvious. God. God wrote it. God put it there. It's God breathed. Now, I've showed you it there, and I would, argo, I would argue that that's fairly obvious. There is an abstraction known, of justice, known as justice that stands above, stands outside of culture and outside of human agency. And why that so obviously points to God is because it cannot sp have spontaneously arisen. You can make an, a general theoretical argument, you know, that life has spontaneously arisen out of this gas meets that gas, and this, this element combines with that element, and lo and behold, life spontaneously arises. That is possible with, when you're talking generally about a life. It is impossible and unfathomable and irreconcilable when you talk about a moral code that runs through the universe. Why? Because that is an agency of consciousness. Those are principles of consciousness that require consciousness, obviously. They have to be thought out. You can argue whether they're preordained. They're pretty obviously preordained, but they are an agency of consciousness. They require consciousness. They cannot just have spontaneously appeared. Pretty obviously God. A theistic worldview. How do you reconcile that? Those, that moral code was written by God. It is God. It is obvious evidence of the existence of God. Atheistic worldview. How do you define it? Three choices. I theorize it, theorize it out of existence. It doesn't really exist. The Nazis were, were not m wrong. Those were their opinions. Not plausible. Laughable. Man created it. Again, laughable. Not even, in not even close to rational. Not even close to plausible. Or it spontaneously arose out of nature. Again, it doesn't exist in nature. Nature is amoral. And it's there evidence for the existence of God.